Hi, my name is Marie Christine. You're watching The Vocalist Magazine TV. We are here with uh, Marie Christine, and this is The Vocalist Magazine. Yes. So, to begin, where were you born and where did you grow up? So, I was born in Montreal. Um, grew up in Laval, but I always went to school in Montreal because my parents worked in Montreal, so it was easier for them to uh, send me to school near their work. So, yeah. So, take us back to your childhood. How did music become such a major part of your life to the point where you made it a career? Um, I think music was already part of the household before I was born anyway. It's something that my, mainly my, my dad was very passionate about. Really, was he a musician or just? No, no, it was, uh, he, he self-taught himself to play piano. And uh, both my parents worked in the medical field. So, okay. uh, you know, music was only a hobby and, you know, a side uh, passion. So, yeah, so it was part of the house, you know, there was always music playing in the, in the car, in the house. I remember waking up, hearing my dad sing, uh, and he would often take me next to him on the piano, and we'd play songs together, and, um, and then I started taking piano classes uh, very early. It was maybe like five. Yeah, I was five, and uh, continued for many, many years until university, classical piano. Um, Cause now it's not classical. No, <laughs> it's not. Although I, I think there's still a little bit of something in certain songs. Um, for example, there's a song on my first album called "A Little Gray on a Sunny Day," and it's mainly it was composed on the piano, and the chords are, you know, not traditional pop chords. Okay. Yeah. But anyway, all that to say that um, music was always part of my life, whether it was you know just me practicing my classical Chopin, Mozart. Or pretending to be to pretending to be uh, Whitney Houston in my room, uh, and um, later on in, in CJEP I started to sing in a choir and uh, Gregory Charles choir. Is that when you started start singing? You must have sang it before. Yeah, I okay. sang I sung before like in school uh, plays and contests and stuff like that, um, and then and then I started singing in a choir. When I was in CJEP with Gregory Charles, and not too long after that, he started taking me aside and singing in front of the choir. Yeah. So, um, and then I don't know what happened one day, but one of the um, shows that we did with the choir, um, there was one singer there who told me about an audition to do a show called Generation Motown, a musical review, and uh, I got the part. Okay, and that's yeah. really what started the career. Yeah, okay. that's cool. really what happened. And funny story, um, the last day, I was still in university at that point studying actuarial math. So um, the so last totally, day, totally unrelated to music. Total, right? Well, yes and no. Math okay. is no, yeah. kind of yeah. related to music. Mm -hmm. okay. But um, it's not really what I wanted to do. <laughs> and so it was kind of like the, the logical choice. Um, I don't think my parents really wanted me to do music at first, yeah. right? So, um, yeah, the last day I, I, that I had to cancel all my classes was the day that they called me to say that I had the part. Okay. Yeah. And then you, that's when you ended. I ran. I okay. ran to the university. I'm like, I'm canceling everything. <laughs> <laughs> and you did not go back? No. For, well, it seemed to work out. So yeah. Good. So far, so good. <laughs> <laughs> do you find what you eat affects your voice? Hmm. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, I cannot have a big meal before I sing. As a matter of fact, I probably don't eat maybe two, I have to eat maybe like more than two hours before the show, ideally. Doesn't always work, but um, I don't eat before I sing, but I do after. And um, aside from that, I mean, for sure, I, there are some rules about dairy and stuff like that. I try to avoid, but yeah. Okay. Some people are really strict. On I'm not. Dairy. I'm not strict okay. on that that much. Okay. No. Okay. Cool. <laughs> uh, take us through your typical day schedule when you're performing or when you're rehearsing. What's a typical day for you? Um. So on the day of a show, usually um, I wake up and make a list of the things that I can't forget. 
So whether it's uh, the set list for the band, uh, the mics, uh, the charts, um, the CDs, the merch, all that. Um, after that, I usually kind of try to relax a little bit because I know that you know <laughs> later on it's going to be kind of crazy. Do you get nervous stuff for performing? Um, it depends on the show. Yeah, I do sometimes for sure. Recently, I was quite nervous for a show uh, <laughs> because. I really had a hard time remembering the lyrics, and I had spent the whole week on that one song. But it can happen sometimes, you know, when that song just, you know, doesn't quite get under your skin. So, uh, so I was nervous for that, but it went really well finally. So I was very, very happy. So back to your your day schedule. Yeah. So then I relax a little bit um, and get to sound check. Uh, I go through the set list to see what are the songs that we need to go through before the show. Uh, I ask the band whatever, if they have any special requests to do uh, anything they want to review. Uh, I'll probably have a couple of interviews before, like if I'm in a different city, or, or even Montreal, have a couple of phone calls, phone phoners. Okay. Um, then it's, uh, after sound check, it's a little bite to eat so I can, so I don't faint on stage. <laughs> and put my makeup on. Uh, and go on stage. And so you, you were saying how you do the production of your shows, right? Yeah. So it's a lot more work. Are you pretty much the only one doing this, or are people in the band are also part of the production? It's really you. Uh, it's me and uh, my boyfriend, who's also a sax player in in the in band. The yeah. Um, so yeah, we were kind of like partners in, in music crime together. <laughs> he, we write charts together. We create the arrangements together. Uh, he does my posters, and okay. you know what I mean. So We're really a team. The side together with. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And so, as you become bigger and more successful musically, do you feel pressure in any way to look in a particular way? Not really. Um, I feel pre I put pressure on myself for how I feel about me, but not about how I should be or how uh, how the industry. Uh, you. Yeah, exactly. It's just I want to feel good about myself. Okay, so you haven't felt more pressure as your name gets bigger and bigger, or you've always felt the same? No, okay. I, I want to just feel good. Okay. If I feel good, then everything is going to come after, you know, like the performance is going to go better and the vibe, everything is better if you feel good. Uh, what are the challenges that you face as a vocalist in particular? Um. For me, I think it's being like uh, not having the, the, the proper team so far. I mean, I'm doing, me and my boyfriend are doing everything, but it's a lot. It's a lot to think of uh, from the posters to the promotion to the accounting to the arrangements that come, you, you know. Are you looking for more people to work on the, that side? Yeah, of definitely. Yeah. It's, it, and then it's really hard to find the right match. You could meet a lot of people that do that for a living, that are agents and managers, but you don't have the right connection the right the you know right. like you don't see the same way yeah exactly it's kind of kind of like a relationship you know uh, you need to have the right connection yeah. with the person so yeah having that would be amazing so that's the next thing on the list adding even if it's just like having an assistant even you know uh, that's really difficult having all those departments to take care of so, what is the, the source of inspiration for some of your music? Mm. It could Maybe be an, it could be particular or something from your day to day life. It's it could be anything. Okay. Like, uh, for example, on my last album, um, there's a song called Creole Geisha, and really that that song was inspired by the expression itself mm -hmm. that I thought of because I really. I really enjoyed um, learning more about geishas, and being that I'm from Haitian descent, I'm like, oh, that would be an interesting, you know, analogy, a Creole geisha. So it's just the expression, and then I started writing, and this song came. Okay, yeah. so it's, so it's just whatever. From anything that yeah, uh, that's good. That comes to mind. <laughs> and how would you describe your music? Right now, because it may change, but right now. Um, I would say it's fresh funk. And in your previous albums, would you also say that? No. Okay. My first album wasn't produced by me. 
um, and I was collaborating with a lot of different people, so um, some compromises were made and stuff. So I would say the first album was Pop Soul. How many albums you have in Two. Okay. This one, Fresh Funk, is a mixture of funk with hip hop, with blues and, and rock. Yeah, okay. me and the, the producer yeah. of the album. Okay. Yeah. But it's really what you want. There's yeah, okay. yes, yes, okay. yes, <laughs> definitely. Okay. Yeah, because I was the executive producer, yeah. so I have to be happy at the end of the day <laughs> of what comes out of the studio. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so this is fresh, fresh from. Yeah. Okay. And in the future, you see yourself continuing with that, or you don't know? Um, I mean, I think I'm always going to kind of stay in the soulful yeah. category, yeah. but I don't want to limit myself to that. I, I would love to try... You know, uh, I don't know, Creole folk okay. with a touch of soul and see what, yeah. what comes out, you know? <laughs> you never know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, when you perform, is there a message that you're trying to get out to the audience? I would say just one, not just one message. Okay. Uh, I definitely think more and more about equal rights uh, more than I ever did before. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's because of what we see in the news, and but uh, but I have other messages. And <laughs> to, you, they reflect in your lyrics. Yeah, okay. definitely. Yeah, you, if you hear uh, well, for example, Voodoo Tricks. Uh -huh. uh, that's a song about seduction, okay. you know. But and and saying that it's it's okay. It's yeah. not, you know. I'm trying to always keep. Uh, uh, um, how should I put it, like a, not a feminist, but like, you know, again, equal rights. That's the main message, but then it can go in different categories of life and love and, you know, uh, respect of others and all that. Cool. So in today's music industry, what does it take to pursue a career as a singer, so given it's so competitive now? Hmm. You have to really uh, be patient. Okay. Yeah. Be patient and remember that there are going to be a couple of obstacles and <laughs> it's okay. And just keep going, keep going, and keep going. And eventually, uh, things do happen. If you put a lot of work, obviously, yeah. you can't just hope. But yeah, work hard and be patient. And um, where would you like your career to be in five years' time? Hmm. I would love to cross the ocean. To Europe? Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. Have you done any work in America? Um, with my music? Yes. No. I've, I've only been in Canada. So you, you think of going to Europe before the States, or? I would think so. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because I feel like my music would probably fit more over there. Especially, for some reason, I'm thinking of UK. Okay. The UK, yeah. Really? That's interesting. Okay, so you, that's your goal, to be... Uh, start performing yeah and I'm not looking to be like you know I don't want I don't want you know to be a big big star yeah. where I can't walk in the supermarket and you know what I mean but I definitely want to do shows in different cities in the world and travel with my music because right now how many how many different cities are you performing so far in Canada hmm um I would say maybe 10 cities okay. yeah okay. Well, I've tried with with other bands, obviously, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, but uh, with my music, yeah. Okay, so you're gonna try and build that up. And what, what exactly would, you, would it take to build that up all the way to Europe? It just takes the music getting played, I guess? Um, I wouldn't even say that. I would just, I'm actually just thinking of going there okay. and finding a way to book a show. Okay. Yeah, just book a show and create some interest and try to invite some people, maybe just a showcase, you know? Yeah. Um, beforehand, I probably, we try to contact a few people and... Uh, You're not just going to show up? I'm not just going to show up like that, but I mean, I would probably just kind of okay. hope yeah. and do a little show there, like a little intimate guitar vocal kind of kind of show. Yeah. And last question. So for those who want to be singers, what advice do you have for them? Hmm. Uh, listen to a lot of music from different styles. Uh, Is that important? How... how cause if your music is just a certain style, is it important to still listen to? Yeah? Definitely. Okay. Fusion is beautiful. Okay. So even if I do fresh funk or yeah. soul, 
I like to have a little touch of classical, a little touch of Creole, a little touch of blues, you know, and uh, and then it creates a lot of possibilities, a lot maybe collaborations with other artists that play different styles, you know, it could be quite interesting. Mm-hmm. So, so that is it. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was 12 questions. Okay, I see. <laughs> Perfect. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Good. Good.